folks, and welcome to part two of The Chemistry of Life, where I'll discuss reactions. In part one, I discuss the structure of the atom and the concept of elements and isotopes. Not too many people think of atoms and elements when you mention biology, but starting at this level will make a lot more sense to you as you learn more about the living world. In part two of Chemistry of Life, I'll explain the formation of molecules. Molecules are formed when atoms chemically bond together. When atoms of elements bond together, the chemical pro properties of the elements change. For example, a molecule of water has chemical properties very different from the two elements that it's made of. Molecules are the smallest particle of a compound. So why do atoms of elements combine to form molecules of compounds? How do the 92 or so elements that exist naturally combine to make millions of compounds, each with different chemical properties? These elements and compounds are interacting spontaneously all the time. What's going on to cause this? Well, that's one of the basic questions that led to the development of the science of chemistry. As we say, the mysteries of life are uncovered by the sciences of both physics and chemistry. To understand what atoms are doing in a chemical reaction, we go back to the structure of the atom. The number of electrons and protons in a normal atom are the same. This balances out the electric charge and makes a normal atom neutral. Electrons speed around the atomic nucleus in energy level shells. The energy levels of atoms each have specific spaces where the electrons tend to pair up. These spaces are called orbitals. Each orbital holds one pair of electrons. The first shell has only one orbital, called the s orbital, and is filled when two electrons are there. Helium has only two electrons, so its first shell's orbital is filled. Hydrogen has only one unpaired electron in its orbit. It needs one more to make a pair. The second shell has four orbitals each holding two electrons. This shell is filled when it has four pairs or eight electrons. Neon has four pairs of electrons in this shell, so its orbitals are filled. Atoms with incomplete valences are chemically unstable and will interact or react with certain other elements in such a way that each atom completes its valence shell. The atoms either share or transfer electrons. This interaction causes them to stick together in what's called a chemical bond. The strongest kinds of bonds are covalent and ionic bonds. The family of elements to the far right column have completely filled valence shells. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon are all unreactive gases and so exist in in most cases, as single atoms. They're chemically inert, meaning that they don't react with other elements. All atoms that have unfilled orbits are chemically reactive. First, let me describe covalent bonds. This is the sharing of a pair of valence electrons between two atoms. Let's take a look at how two hydrogen atoms do this. Each hydrogen atom has one unpaired electron in its valence shell and each needs one more to become chemically stable. The pairs of electrons are shared, and this creates a bond forming a molecule of hydrogen. One pair of shared electrons is a single bond. The Lewis dot model is a method that illustrates this process of bonding well. We use the symbol of the nucleus and then dots to represent only the valence electrons. Hydrogen is represented this way. This one electron is unpaired. When it bonds to another hydrogen, it's shown this way, sharing the pair. Water, H2O, involves oxygen sharing one electron with each of the two hydrogen atoms in a water molecule. Oxygen has only eight electrons. Two electrons pair up in the first energy level and six valence electrons. For the Lewis dot model, we only draw dots for the valence electrons. For any element larger than helium, we put a dot on each side, top, and bottom before we start to pair them up. 
Again, oxygen has six valence electrons, so you see that two electrons are unpaired. The hydrogens can benefit by sharing their valence electrons with oxygen, forming a chemically stable water molecule. Each of these examples is a single bond, because each involves the sharing of one pair of electrons. A stick model of a molecule can be shown this way. Each of the lines represent one pair of shared electrons. Sometimes double or even triple bonds exist. That means they're sharing more than one pair of electrons between them. The two oxygens can come together by sharing two pairs of electrons between them. This is a double bond forming an oxygen molecule. Molecules of hydrogen, H2, and oxygen, O2, are pure elements. But if two different elements combine, we call the result a compound. So water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2, are compounds. Atoms and molecules attract the shared electrons with varying degrees, depending on the element. The attraction of a particular atom for the electrons in a covalent bond is called its electronegativity. The more electronegativity an atom is, the more strongly it pulls the shared electrons toward itself. Two atoms of the same element, of course, have the same electronegativity, so neither atom holds the electrons closer than the other. But atoms of different elements often have different electronegativities. The periodic table is arranged in a way that allows us to determine the relative electronegativity of elements. As we go from the lower left to the upper right, the electronegativity increases. Excluded are the noble gases, of course. They have no need for additional electrons, so they have no electronegativity. So these elements here have strong electronegativity and pull shared electrons toward them more strongly in a covalent bond. Oxygen in a water molecule has a stronger electronegativity than either of the two hydrogens. As a result, the oxygen end of the water molecule is slightly more negative than the two hydrogen ends. The symbol here is the Greek symbol chi. The negative sign means that this end of the molecule is slightly negative, and of course, the plus sign means that this end is more positive due to where the electrons tend to be clustered. This type of bond this type of bond is called a polar covalent bond because the molecule itself is polar. A polar molecule has an uneven distribution of electric charges on it. A nonpolar covalent bond exists in a hydrogen or an oxygen molecule. Therefore, these two molecules are nonpolar. The polarity of the molecules is significant in how they affect living things. We'll discuss this more when we talk about water. The chemical properties of atoms of some elements cause them to routinely lose or gain electrons. When they lose electrons, the atom becomes more positive. When an atom gains electrons, it becomes more negative. You may recall that atoms in these states are called ions, or electrically charged atoms. Atoms of elements in the same chemical family, like sodium, lithium, and potassium, all tend to lose one electron and become a plus one ion. Fluorine, chlorine, and bromine all tend to gain one electron and become a negative one electron. We call these, we call these positive and negative ions, respectively. Another name for a positive ion is a cation, and negative ions are called anions. Again, because of the way that the table of elements is organized, we're able to predict whether an atom will tend to lose or gain electrons. By examining the outermost electron shell, the valence shell, you see why. The chemical behavior of an atom depends mostly on the number of electrons in the valence shell. When the atom of a particular element has a really strong electronegativity, it can actually strip away an electron from an atom that has low electronegativity. This is what happens when chlorine, an element whose atoms have very strong electronegativity, come in contact with sodium.
Sodium has 11 electrons in all. One pair fills the first energy shell, four pair fill the next shell, leaving only one electron in its valence shell. A chlorine atom has 17 electrons, one pair in the first, four pair in the second, and seven in the third level. This leaves, this leaves one valence electron unpaired. When the two come together, the strong electronegativity of the chlorine pulls the one electron from the sodium to fill its valence shell. The complete transfer of electrons from one atom to another creates two ions. Chlorine becomes a negative one ion, while sodium becomes a plus one ion. Because they're opposite in charge, they're attracted to each other, forming what is called an ionic bond. All ionic bonds are formed in such a way. Bonding between elements forms stable forms of matter. In part three of Chemistry of Life, we'll discuss the intermolecular forces between compounds and how that affects life, as well as the energy of chemical reactions.